So today we're obviously going to be talking about the new Panasonic camera. I've been excited to see this camera. It seems to check off all the little things that people have wanted in a single camera. What we really came down to when you look at the body itself and you know just the center chunk of it, we're like, all right, we want to make a camera of this sort of scale. We had a couple of parameters. We wanted to keep the weight down. We needed to keep the size down. We needed to keep the power down. Given those parameters, we wanted to squeeze everything we could into the camera and we just it, there was no worry about matching performance of another camera and saying, oh, well, that will hurt that other camera. No, 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 because we really didn't have any camera that was like this. So we Straight. just put in everything we could. So we started with a Super 35 sensor. But a brand new one, right? Brand new design. That Super 35 sensor is not a 4K sensor. Right. It is a 5.7K sensor. And what 5.7K gives you on a camera like this is an excellent 4K recording. So we do 4K up to 60p. We can do 2K or HD up to 240 frames a second. And up to 120, it will give you the full Super 35 image. To get up from 120 up to 240, we need to come down a little bit in the size of the sensor just for the okay. speed of the information going through. So, but it still goes to the four thirds image area like we have on like the GH5. And one of the great advantages of having 5.7K, you're still sampling from four and a half K of resolution mm -hmm. at that point in order to get your 2K or HD. So you still have a really rich image. You're not doing like line skipping or things yeah. like that. Now, we also output over SDI or HDMI or both a 4K image from that. But coming in a firmware update, an addition that will give some more uh, recording options uh, internally for like an increased data rate and such, mm -hmm. but also we'll have the option for 5.7K raw. Mm -hmm. So raw up to 30 frames a second in 5.7K or up to 60 frames a second in 4K. What's this about the dual native ISO? It is a sensor level technology. It's what we build our own sensors. You know, Panasonic has its own foundry. And it is something where there is a different pathway for extracting information off of the individual photosites. By having two different ways that we inherently read the sensor, we get two different ISOs and for us, Old guys, it's like having two different film stocks in your camera. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's so a good one, it. it's 800 ISO and 2500 mm -hmm. ISO. And there is zero compromise between those two. We have 14 stops of dynamic range on this camera. You're not going to lose dynamic range. You're not going to lose anything in, in weird color artifacts or what about noise? noise. You're not going to have any increase in so noise. So why wouldn't people work in 2500? Well, the fact is if you're shooting daytime exterior, 2500 ISO. Yeah, that's kind of nuts. Right. That's, you know, it's, it's way too much. Yeah. And, it, and, and <laughs> also having, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's going to mean, you know, thing that you're fighting in tons of ND or yeah. weird shutter angles yeah, and true. stuff like that. So there are advantages to being able to have this range. But you can just switch between them. The color science in this same look, the same Vericam look we've come to love in yes. this camera? Yes. Panasonic has always been known for its lovely, accurate colors. Mm. You know, skin tones yeah. and you know, it's warm. Very, yeah, and it's very true, yeah. natural look. We just really wanted to have beautiful, accurate skin tones and just all the colors are very natural. So that's been a tradition for many years. The look is everything. Absolutely. You know? Because I've, uh, you can talk about all the different numbers and specs and whatever in a camera, but it doesn't look good. Yeah. Who right, cares? Right. So, yeah, so we absolutely, you know, we have that matching look. And then this has our version of log, which is called V-Log. Mm -hmm. V-Log is an absolute standard. So that is what is in our Vericam cameras. This camera, the EVA1 set to V-Log and a Vericam set to V-Log, you will get absolute matching images. So you can take whatever color correction you did on one, you know, whatever LUT or something you did on one, okay. and you apply it to Makes the other, B and the they will absolutely match. And right. so everyone loves the look of those cameras. Yeah, right. You're gonna get the same look here. Let's talk codecs and resolution now. We can record in 4K, DCI 4K 4096, or Ultra HD, which is 3840, or 2K 2048 or 1920 by 1080 HD or even the good old 720. There's still some sports things and stuff that you know, everyone wants to do in 720. So, okay, you know, no problem. And it all comes originally from the 5.7K. So we do sampling and stuff to you know be able to use as much of that information as possible. Mm -hmm. Depending on the resolution you shoot and the frame rate you shoot, we have different options. So on first release of the camera, the highest data level that you'll be able to do is in 4K, 10-bit, 422, in a long GOP format up to 150 megabit a We're second. We're talking internally. 
That's internal recording. Mm -hmm. So, and that would be up to 150 megabit a second. Now, I mentioned earlier about having a firmware update that'll be coming in early 2018. That will up that so that you'll also have another option. We're not removing anything, we're just adding more options. You'll have the option to do up to 400 megabits per second. So then- Internally. You have internal recording. So when you do that, we do have the SD XC cards here. Mm -hmm. These are what we record to. So again, keeping costs down, you know, the, not only Wait. do we want to have the camera at a certain kind of price point, but <laughs> that little guy is what we record onto. That kind of shocked me when you pulled that out of there. I was thinking something big was coming out. Nope, those little guys, <laughs> there's two of them. And so what you can do is record to them sequentially so that you get a long record time, or you can record to them at the exact same time. 4K 10 bit, 128 gig card, how much video? About 120 minutes. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, that's, that's a lot that's, of data. That's more than a day. So we know this camera's looking gorgeous and all that. Let's go down the list of some of the other features. Like the one thing is that you guys chose to do the EF mount. EF has sort of become a new standard, if you will, a common standard for lens mounts in the cinema world. There's lots of options on both relatively inexpensive lenses up to very, very high end, very high quality. I mean, you have a lot of manufacturers that have now gotten into the world you of You had no other option. Things. I mean, you're not going to put a Sony mount on there, and right. you're not going to put a PL mount, because if you do that, you put this in a very high-end yeah. lens market. So and you did the right thing. Another aspect to it just gets back to the design parameter of this camera. We wanted to keep it small. We wanted to keep it really lightweight. There's also a lot of features that we've tried to bring in from our, our other model cameras, whether they're from you know, below or above, it's just features that people have liked over the years. So like this particular display, that home screen, mm -hmm. is something that we designed for the Veracam mm -hmm. and people liked it, so we're gonna try to extend that. But we also have built-in NDs, you know, two stop, four stop, six stop, that are just built in right in there. Physical filters. Physical filters that you actually hear flip. click. Yeah, yeah, so you push the button and you'll see it flipping nice. in place and stuff. Now, I see here you got a 12 volt in, that's cool. Yes, so if you want to use a big battery and have a whole system set up, works directly with 12 volt, you know, very standard. Kind We're of moving along here. So two XLR audio inputs, dumb side angled out. Yes. Very you know, good idea. Get the cables out of the way. So let's talk about your fancy grip here. This hand grip has all these controls on it. I mean, it's not just a record button. It also has the menu controls. It has a user button or two. There's actually one tucked in for your index finger, like way inside there. They have the dial on it. But also, you want to have a hand grip that's really comfortable, so it's, it's a very well-shaped hand grip, right? So you can really size that for different hands and shapes. And then depending on the position you're going to hold the camera, because it's not always just up on your shoulder or yeah. right here, it might be down low or up high. So if I can, I have well, eight different positions. Yeah, in that this I can scenario, set this, to. this is for front holding. Well, I, call, right. I call that the gorilla style. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. you know, you can be in here, you can yeah. be in front of you, right. whatever. So nice. but, I have eight positions. I don't have to go in and cool. turn a knob or whatever. It has just a locator that you can lock no, to. No, you need that because your hand will get fatigued and right. whatnot. Uh, or, makes sense. you know, if I'm down low, low on the mode, ground yeah. there, yeah. if I'm here and I can be way up high. Yeah. So I have lots of positions for it. But then, you know, if I am going to rig out, if I want to be a, a bigger situation, or if I just, this hand grip's going to get in the way because I need to be in a really narrow kind of setup. Drone it. Uh, exactly. So I can just rotate there and it comes off. And It'll we're going to cool. be able to relocate that down. Right. So you mount. guys love your accessories and they are terrific. So this is a very basic bayonet kind of mount. So then you'd be able to put this out here yep. or wherever you might want to have it. Putting our accessory manufacturer hat on, mm -hmm. I really love the design of this box essentially and the screw points that you put on top because it's a great platform to for us to be able to build off of and make it exactly what the user needs it to. Yeah. In this case, it's, it's now built for hand Held. You know, we have our graticle eye on here. We got our padded shoulder pad VCT plate on the bottom. And if you own any Zacuto products, all you need is this top plate and away you go. So with this top plate, we made it so that we could use your handle, which is a very nice handle. But we also, I've made this top plate so we can put our handle on, which has different capabilities, you know. But this is this is great. I love yeah, how this I mean, works. Yeah, I can go either way. This camera when balanced, most likely where the lens meets the camera body is probably going to be where it is right now almost halfway on your shoulder because you have a small and light camera. And of course, you know, you have rods that can come out the back so that if you want to put a bigger battery back there, then that helps you with your balance as well. And you could slide the whole thing forward some. Now, one thing that you are going to offer that I've always mentioned here is with the our LCD screen, yeah. you guys are making an adapter for yeah. 
an eyepiece. Our, our Z Finder will be able to attach to here and you can use that instead of having a, a dedicated EVF if you want to go that route. Right. You know, it can flip up. A flip out screen, yeah. so if you needed to get to the touch screen exactly. or you just, you know, didn't want to have your eye to it at that exactly point. Exactly right. But, uh, so but, yeah. that, and then this mounts, we have our mounting system, but then if you just loosen this knob right here, that accepts a uh, 15, 15 millimeter, millimeter rod. rod, so then you can use your mounting system. Which randomly <laughs> so uh, will random. go into one of our articulating arms with no other parts, because those are go. 15 mils on either end. So in this top plate here, you could drop one of our arms in here and drop your monitor right onto our arm, and you can twist it and get it anywhere you want. I so mean, wait, the, what the camera comes with, that's, that's important yes. that we should say what it comes with. It comes with this, this top handle, it comes with this LCD, it comes with the camera itself, of course. This small battery, and you can right. make other batteries, it comes with the hand grip, and it has a dual bay charger and an AC power supply. Yeah, so oh, a point. dual bay charger. Yeah, yeah, so two batteries charge at once. Wow. That's so nice I, start. Okay, I that's like a good the, you know, move. this little battery is nice and tiny, and if you're going to be doing things like you know, drone work, or whatever that you need to have those, you can get more of those batteries. But otherwise, we make two larger sizes. Uh, this is 5,800 milliamps, so we also have one that's 8,800 or 8,900. I really like that one. It extends out the back of the camera like maybe an inch. This one will run the camera for about two hours. The middle size runs for about four hours, and the big one runs for like six wow. hours. I mean, two so, hours is, is you know, more than half. But even, even with the, the middle size one, four hours, you get, say, let's say you went and got three of those, you had this one as well, you got a second dual bay charger, now you have four slots for charging, four batteries, and you can run all day. I like that you, you know, didn't build this into the body of the camera. I don't yeah. like that. When it's built into the body of the camera, then it's only going to work at that one spot. Yeah. And when it's versatile to move around, this is about a 15 inch cord, so it can really move it. You, know, you can have it way out here if you want, yeah. or you can have it, if you're using a gimbal rig or something, you can actually mount this onto there and be able to use it it's that It's nice way. that you didn't waste materials and money on a viewfinder stuck in the back too. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things we, talked to people that it, you know the viewfinder that you get mounted onto Nobody a camera that. they're usually not that great and it's at a really awkward spot and stuff and just people just well, why would you add to the cost of the camera add to the cost add to the weight add to the power usage all of which were issues with the you know if we added that power for that no, and then I we would it. have to take something else off i want one or two yeah me too well sign thanks for up. coming yeah thank you appreciate it thank you very much